Hey guys, today I'm here to bring you my review of Game of Thrones Season 5, Episode 2. Now, I was really looking forward to this episode, and the reason I was looking forward to this episode most was we'd get, we'd get Arya and the Martells, and yeah, I was really looking forward to this week's episode. Last week's episode, when I first reviewed it, I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Now I'd probably get 4 out of 5 stars, but it was, that was still a great episode. Um, and I was, so, yeah, I was obviously really looking forward to this week's episode, and I have to say, I didn't like this episode that much. It was, and it, it was very disappointing. Now, don't get me wrong, there was some good, there was some good stuff sprinkled throughout the episode, but it was not enough, and, yeah. Honestly, I'm probably not even going to spend much time reviewing this episode, because, I mean, things happen, but not really, and the things I wanted to see, we only probably got, like, less than five minutes of screen time this episode, and I'm really, it's very disappointing, like, very disappointing. Now, I'll get into this episode, probably not going to spend much time on each topic, so yeah, basically, Arya arrives in Bravo, so that, uh, and the guy who she talked to at the end of last the season fin season four finale takes her to the house of black and white, and basically Arya tries to get into the house of black and white. She says Valor Morgul, and she shows him the coin, and the guy does not let her in. And then she spends the rest of that night saying the names of all the people she still needs to kill: Cersei, the Mountain, Walder Frey, and someone else. Someone else. I forgot. But yeah. And basically, and then the next scene, the last scene we see of Arya, she's basically being picked on, kind of, but she's, like, threatening them with her sword, and then the faceless man, he comes, and he, see, he sees her, and then he walks away, and so basically, and he goes back to the house of black and white, Arya follows him, and then basically, we find out it's Jack and Hagar, the guy from season two, and yeah, that was awesome to see him again. And he basically welcomes her into the house of black and white. So, yeah, that's really all that happened with that Arya stuff. And it was very, it stuck really well to the book. So I have no problem with it, Eric. Um, so, yeah, I really don't have anything to say about that scene. It was nice to see Arya again. It was nice to see all those awesome shots of Bravos. But really, eh. So, yeah, that was decent stuff. Well, the best part was obviously seeing Jack and Hagar again. He was one of the best parts of season two, and season two wasn't my favorite se It was my least favorite season. It's still a good season overall, but they're just, and I didn't like it as much, really because of the slow pace of the Jon Snow and Daenerys stories. So that's really what brought that season down. So, yeah. The next uh, section is Brienne and Podrick, and basically they stumble across a tavern, and they're stopping to eat, and what do you know, Podrick and Brienne spot Peter, at Peter Baelish and uh, Sansa, and basically Brienne goes up to Sansa, and she tells her, like, she pledged her sword to her mother cat, and she's promising to protect her, and then uh, Sansa brought up the fact that, uh, Brienne was at Joffrey's wedding bowing to him, and obviously, basically, she turned him down, and lo and behold, so basically, so yeah, that was expected, and basically, um, Brienne and Patrick leave, they steal, uh, two of their horses, and Peter's men chase after them, and, um, crap, basically, and so, yeah, and both Brienne and Patrick escape unharmed, but, some of the guardsmen got, uh, those gar soldiers got killed, and there were some cool death scenes, but yeah. So yeah, don't have anything to say about that. All I know is that Sansa and Brienne never even met in the books, and honestly, at this time at the beginning of the fourth, uh, the books, um, Brienne is being sent away, so yeah. So obviously, so yeah, that never happened in the books, but, and also, I don't want to be that, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, I really don't want to be one of those people who compares things to the books, but I just finished reading the fourth and the fifth books, and I'm halfway through the, f almost uh, done with the first book, and I just can't help but make the comparisons. I can't help it, but yeah, but obviously.
usually I will always judge this as a show, and it was nice to see Brienne and uh, Sansa meet, but obviously nothing came of it. But uh, Brienne's not giving up hope. Uh, Podrick's basically like, well, Arya and Sansa, n neither of them wanted their your protection, and Brienne's like, no, she's still gonna tr go, like she's gonna follow them because she knows where they're heading, and she's like, you really think uh, Sansa is safe with Littlefinger? So yeah. So Brienne and Podrick, they still have a purpose to the story, well, to the show, so that's great, because I love Brienne, I love Podrick, I love their scenes together, so, yeah, that's the end of that storyline, um, the next stuff, we get Cersei and Jamie and Dorne, basically Cersei gets, like, kind of like a warning from the Martells, you know, well, not Dorne himself, probably like the Sand Snakes and Ilaria, that, um, they still have, obviously, they still have Marcella, and she better, you know, and Cersei's obviously taking that as a threat, so she sends Jamie to Dorne, which did not happen in the books, Jamie went to the Riverlands, but we're probably not going to see the Tullys again in the show, unfortunately, so it makes sense that they would go to, uh, Dorne, they would send him to Dorne, so yeah, basically, and, like, Cersei's like, uh, the Martells are going to take it as a threat if you take it whole army with you, but, like, Jamie's like, no, I'm not going to do that. And he, and he's, like, telling her, I'm not going to die, uh, not die, um, go alone. And, basically, we get a little Braun and Lo Lola Stokeward scene. Um, she was a character in the books, and they finally added her in the season, the series. It was funny. It was nice to see her. I mean, she was mentioned last season. And, um, so, basically, Jamie convinces Braun to come with him to Dorne, and basically Braun, he said, told Braun that, that he would have more money, and uh, he'd have a better bride, more, a uh, better castle, so yeah, Braun's in, he'll do anything for cash, for gold, so yeah, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that, and yeah, so they're going to Dorne, which I'm looking forward to seeing in the show. Obviously, I would like to to see Jamie in the Riverlands and to see the Tullys again, but I actually don't mind this change of sending um, Jamie to Dorne. That it'll be interesting to see. And yeah, and then there's this little scene between Varys and Tyrion. Basically, they were talking about more. It was more like a continuation of the era conversation in last episode. So really, I have nothing to say. Um, about that, and then the next scene we see after that is a dwarf head being brought to Cersei. Cersei, she offered, basically, she's offering a lordship to anyone, like, no, it doesn't matter how lowborn they are, to kill Tyrion, to kill Tyrion. So, so basically all the dwarves are, they're all fucked. So, yeah. <laughs> Poor guys. Um, and yeah, after that, there's a small council meeting. It's interesting, basically. There's obviously the small council are smaller, and uh, she basically is offering other titles to other members of the small council. And we get to see Kevin Lannister, and she makes Kevin uh, Tywin Lannister's younger brother, and basically she offers him the title of uh, uh, Master of War. And Kevin is like, well. The king, he's basically like, the king should be here at meetings, and Cersei's like, I'm speaking through him, and like, yeah, Tommen really should be there. If he's gonna rule, no matter how brief it is, he needs to know what he's doing. So, yeah, and I would agree with Kevin Lannister, and basically Kevin's like, I'm, le he's le going back to Casterly Rock, and he said, if the king wants him, the king will send for him, because he's not gonna take Cersei's orders, which, that was cool. So, yeah, that scene is done with. I did I have to say it was a decent scene. The best part was obviously seeing Kevin Lannister again. So, yeah. But it's also I have to say it's really nice to see characters we haven't seen in in season several seasons. Like so it's nice to see Jack and Hagar again. It's nice to see Kevin Lannister again. Even though Kevin Lannister had a very tiny role, we still saw him in the first two seasons. So it's nice to see those characters again. So, yeah, now let's go to the wall. Basically, there's a scene, uh, Sh Princess Shireen. I mean, obviously, I know she's a smaller character, but I really enjoy her. She's so adorable. I, I just really like Shireen. 
And basically, she's uh, teaching Gilly to read. Sam is there, of course. He he loves Gilly. He's devoted to her, and he's reading. And so, yeah, I really don't have anything to make out, out of that scene other than the fact that they're talking about grayscale, like what Shireen had. And then uh, Queen Solis comes in, and basically she, there's a little scene between her and Shireen. She's basically tell her, telling him to stay away from the, the wildlings. And uh, Solis doesn't want to, and obviously we know that Shireen spends a lot of time, time with her books, and basically Solis said, if you knew more about the books, you wouldn't question my, like, order, like, someone like that. So, yeah, that was an interesting scene. And then we see a scene between Stannis and John. Stannis kind of, is kind of, he's not, he doesn't punish John, but he's basically rep, kind of reprimanding John for killing Mance Raider, like, Mercy killing him. And, yeah, basically that little part of the scene ends with Stannis offering John a legitimization to become Star John Stark, Lord of Winterfell, and of course it, it's the it's the Stark honor, and um, John refuses. Typical Starks, they always o o uh, choose honor over anything. I mean, I I love the Starks for that, but I also it's like I love the Starks because they're so honorable, honorable, but I also like worry about them all the time because they're so honorable and they'll always choose honor over saving their own butt, and it's, like, very noble, but it's also stupid at the same time, and, of course, uh, John does not accept the legitimization, and then, which I would have to say, this is probably the best scene in the entire, ep one of the best scenes in the episode, um, basically, they're choosing who the Lord Commander is, and one of the men, he cho he's uh, nominating Sir Dennis Malister, and then Jano Slint is nominating Sir Alistair Thorne, and then, like, Maester Eamon is calling for more uh, nominations before he closes the nominating. And basically, Sam goes on the speech, and he tells them what he's nominating Jon Snow and telling him why that he should be Lord Commander. And he, like, uh, basically tattletales on J.O. Slit. Uh, J.O. Slit hid with Gilly and the baby during the uh, battle. And they're all laughing at him. It's like, it's, that's a really good, that's probably my favorite scene in the entire episode. And, um, yeah, basically, they all vote, and uh, the new commander is Jon Snow. Yay! I knew it was going to happen in the books, but still, I was, they've changed so much already. But then again, I guess they wouldn't change that. So, yeah, Jon Snow's the 998th Lord Commander of the Wall. It's really cool to see, and finally, a good guy is going to have some, th some power, more power. He, uh, he's a good guy, and he's finally getting power. It's like, finally, the bad guys aren't winning, at least in this sense. So, yeah. Now, let, we'll go, I'll just talk briefly about the scene in Dorne, and... I was really disappointed by this because we only got a few minutes in Dorne. I was like, what? And by next week's preview, it doesn't even look like we're going to get Dorne anymore, unfortunately. And basically, there's a scene, Alaria Sand is like, oh, we got to see Prince Doran. Really like this new Prince Doran. And Ariel Hota is badass. And we get Alaria basically telling uh, Doran that they shouldn't be, they should hurt, basically like hurt Marcella or something like that. Also, we get a little bit of Marcella and Prince Tristan. They're so cute together. They're adorable. And, yeah. So, basically, I'm making nothing out of that. Ilaria's being overly vicious. And this is the thing I have the problem with most. Because they cut out Ariane Martell. And, I mean, I like Ilaria Sam, but I'd rather see Ariane Martell. Because, honestly, in the, bo in the book, Ariane has very tiny part. And... Um, Ariane is a POV character. Like, I don't understand why they didn't add her. I really don't. And that's the thing I'm probably mad about most for this season, that we don't have Ariane Martell. But I'm still holding out hope that we could get her by, they could introduce her next season. Especially, I hope they do, because if she plays a really major role, they have to add her. They have to. So, yeah. That's all I have to make out of that scene. And we didn't see the Sand Snakes either. Like, I'm already doubting, like, the, the actresses they cast as the Sand Snakes. 
yet they're still making us wait to show us fan stakes, and I just need them now because I'm still doubting them because I, like I, I said before, I don't really care about, I don't like the fan, I don't like the Tyene fan casting at the moment. Like, looks-wise, the Nymeria fan casting is okay. Obara fan casting is good. But yeah, I'll talk, obviously, I'll go, I'll talk more about the fan snakes when we actually see them in an episode. So, yeah. So that was really disappointing that we only got a few minutes in Dorn, and it wasn't a long enough scene for me. So, now the last stuff is all the stuff in Marine, and basically we see Dario and Grey Worm searching for the person who killed the poor and sullied dude, and they go into the same uh, house that the guy was killed in, and they're searching for a son of the harpy. They find the dude, and they bring him back to the palace, and Daenerys is having a small council meeting, and one of the fl freed slaves that's on her, the freed, one of the freed slaves, like, probably, like, the highest ranking, I guess, is on their council, and basically they're all, like, advising her, and so basically Daenerys decides that, to execute that man, and then there's this great scene between Sir Bear, and then the small council is dismissed, and there's a great scene between her and, uh, Sir Barristan, and Sir Barristan is basically reminding Daenerys of her father, the Mad King, and basically Daenerys is like, oh, they're all lies for my enemies, I'm like, really? Like, how, like, seriously, she didn't believe that stuff about her father? I mean, why else would there be a rebellion against a king, uh, unless they were, like, mad, or, like, just a sh horrible king, or they were a usurper, like, why would there be, a, you know, so, and it was a really good scene, I really like Sir Barristan, and basically Daenerys takes it to heart, she says, no, we'll have a trial for the dude, but before she could do anything, that freed slave, he, kill she, he killed that son of the harpy, and Daenerys, and Daenerys basically confronts him in the room, and he's, you know, and, yeah. So, she obviously has to punish him, and she's, she makes this little speech about why she has to do what she has to do, and the slaves are not happy about that, well, the freed slaves, and basically, she still has to kill him, so she kills the, she has Dario kill him, and basically, there's like a little riot, like those slaves, they're not happy with her for what she did, they're starting to hiss at her, I'm like, whoa. <sighs> basically, so basically what I got from that part is Daenerys did not, she did not really listen to what Sir Barristan had to say. And she was, he was like how easy, he would talk, talked about how easy it was for him to, the Mad King to kill all those men, and basically... Yeah, she didn't listen to him. She should have just had, she just should have let him go. I mean, obviously she needs to prove that she's not a, le a ruler to be messed with, but she also needs to, she also needs to show mercy. And yeah. So basically, uh, Daenerys uh, basically didn't take any of that advice Sir Barristan gave her, and that was really wise counsel. And so yeah, Daenerys, like, that's another strike. I mean, I know you have to prove that you're a strong leader, but you need to listen to people who who know what they're doing. You need to listen to your counselors. I mean, she is listening to them. She's like, it's like she's, it goes from one through one ear and it comes out the other ear. And it's like, Daenerys, you got to listen to your counselors. That's the same problem I have with a cer two certain characters in the TV show Rain. Though this is not a Rain review, so I won't bring, go into that. So, yeah. And then the very last scene we see, and, like, the, the guard, her people are, like, basically, all, I, we're going to need more guards for you tonight. And, basically, Daenerys dismisses all of them. And she goes out, and we see Drogon. He looks amazing. He's so much bigger. And she's, like, so happy to see Drogon. And she's uh, reaching to touch him. And he flies away right in front of her. And that's how the episode ends. So overall, it's not a bad episode, I just didn't like it that much, and it was extremely disappointing, especially with all the stuff in Dorne, though I have to say, once Jamie arrives in Dorne, um, I think we'll see more of the Martells, so I'm really hoping that, and next week's episode, like I thought this episode was going to be better than last week's episode, but next week's episode truly looks great, I mean we're going to see Ramsey Bolton, and Reek, we're going to see Sansa and Littlefinger, we're going to see 
more King's Landing stuff, more of the House in Black and White, so I'm really looking forward to that. So yeah, overall, I'd probably give this episode 2.75 out of 5 stars. It really could have been better. It's not a bad episode, it's just, I was very disappointed by it. So yeah, what do you think of this episode? I'd love to know your thoughts. And also, don't forget, my Game of Thrones live stream is my set for this episode is this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. I'm really looking forward to doing this. Hopefully, I'll actually have more people to talk to on this live stream. So, yeah. Um, I will see you guys in my next review. Bye.